How's it going YouTube? This is Crazy316. This is going to be a video response to, I believe this user's name is either PYO Dog, Pyo Dog, don't know how to pronounce it, however he intended it to be. Um, this user has a video called 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. You can be gay and go to heaven. And we're going to make a response here and show that you cannot be a homosexual and make it into the kingdom of God and there are several scriptures to back that up and we're going to also go into the Greek the ancient Greek and Hebrew lexicons and explain what those words mean um, and we're going to put an end to this madness that people are trying to push now so before I begin, I must warn you to to brace yourself, um, to brace yourself to probably bust out in laughter on certain areas because it's just that ridiculous. Like, um, if clear out the area around you on the floor to make sure you don't land in, on anything if you fall out of your chair. Um, but you've been forewarned, so let's proceed. Someone has brought to my attention that 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 discusses the issue of homosexuality, but it really doesn't. It definitely says, nor boy prostitutes, nor practicing homosexuals will inherit the kingdom of God. It says that. Okay. Now, let's look at what these words mean, because one thing that a lot of, a, a lot of people like to do nowadays is when they see the word homosexual, that means homosexuals today. You can't read this book like it's been written today. You have to research what all of the words meant when they were used, and the word homosexuals wasn't even invented, so unless this, this Bible was written in the 1900s still, then that word doesn't mean what it means today. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of that for now. Okay, so the word homosexual was not invented back then and it wasn't um, however where you are wrong is that the definition of it was different from the definition of it now uh, in comparison back then uh, you're wrong the Bible clearly and plainly lays out what a homosexual is in fact the King James does it best in uh, Leviticus and in Romans 1 where it says uh, man with man or woman with woman so how can you get any more plain than that when the Bible is condemning um, lust for one man lusting for an uh, after another man um, I'm gonna bring up a couple of different scriptures we're gonna start off with um, let's start off with um, Matthew in the 16th chapter and or the 19th chapter I mean Matthew in the 19th chapter I'm gonna read verses 4 through 6 so that reads haven't you read Jesus replied um, at the beginning the Creator made them male and female um, and said for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh so they are no longer two but one therefore what God has joined together let let man not separate now notice first Jesus referred to the Genesis account of marriage where God set the rules for it and notice after that he never said anything about homosexual marriage so where are we getting this information from? Um, quite actually, in this scripture, Jesus Christ is actually contradicting same-sex marriage. So that's one point that goes against your cause. Now, let's see if we can find something else. Such lists reflect the common moral sensibility of the New Testament period. Now, I take that to mean that the morals in this particular section were relative to the New Testament period. 
I don't even know. Are we in the New Testament period? I mean, I'm going to tell you what it actually says without offering my own opinion into it. The Greek word translated as boy prostitutes designated Katamites, or K I don't know how to say this word, Katamites. I'm just going to say that. If I'm wrong, whoops. Example, boys or young men who were kept for purposes of prostitution, which was a practice not uncommon in the Greco-Roman world. In Greek mythology, this was the function of Ganymede, the cup-bearer of the gods, whose Latin name was Katamitis. The term translated practicing homosexuals refers the practicing homosexuals refers to adult males who indulged in homosexual practices with such boys, with temple prostitutes. Not talking about homosexuals of today. Okay, so the 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 fallacy that the homosexuals love to use over and over again. Okay, let's point out these two words. If you look at the Greek version of the Bible, which is the original language that it was written in back when they wrote it, we have these two words, malikos and arsenikoites. Okay, these are the key words that we're looking for here. Now, malikos, the definition for that, there's two, because it can mean two different things, and we know which one applies here because it's quite obvious. The first one is of, of things like clothes, like soft garments and soft clothes. The second one is of persons, such as soft or effeminate people. So, soft or effeminate males, uh, men, and, men and boys who allow themselves to be misused homosexually. Um, a male who practices homosexuality, um, a pederast or a sodomite. See, it's we you we the the definition includes um, pedophilia because, like you said in your own video, um, the these men would mess with boy temple prostitutes in Rome, and that is considered pedophilia. Um, they, as their own little country or their own little empire, may have. Um, upheld that kind of nonsense and filthiness but we consider that to be very very immoral and disgusting and the Bible does as well all over the place so the second one are cynicoids. Um the more descriptive definition is a male partner in homosexual intercourse a homosexual um, so then it is possible that arsenicoites in certain contexts refers to the active partner in homosexual intercourse in contrast with malikos, the passive partner, the effeminate one. So, you fail to bring those two words up, which are the Greek uh, words for it and the definitions thereof. This is where you fail. Now, YouTube, the Christian community, the real ones, please do not be fooled by these homosexuals that claim to be Christians. Do not be fooled by this crap that they're trying to throw out there that the Bible does not condemn homosexuality. We have Matthew in the 19th chapter. I just read that. We have um, 1 Corinthians when it's read properly and you do the cross-referencing and the research on the original words the real original words, we come to find out that it is indeed talking about homosexuality. Uh, and lots of things about homosexuality is talking about. It, there's subcategories, actually, when you look at the definition. So it's even bigger than just saying homosexual. It's much bigger than that. 